It is week three of the season, so we are going to be opening up our third Great Vault, and I do have a couple of alts to check this time around. I'm going to be checking all four of my tanks. I have Brewmaster Monk. I also have my VDH that I'm working up, uh, working on gearing up to actually prog Brew Twister. My guild won't catch me dead playing a Blood Death Knight, but I am willing to play VDH for the Chains, uh, the Sigil of Chains, so we'll have access to that maybe in a few weeks. But for the time being, we are going to be probably opening this up as Windwalker. And the reason why is because I was able to full clear Heroic last week. We got to a couple Mythic bosses down as well. I full clear, or I got my full Mythic 10 vaults, as well as I did a couple of delves. I don't think I fill out my entire delve vault, but I do have a lot of things in there. Uh, the reason I'm rolling Windwalker specifically, even though I'm a Brewmaster player for the most part, is because I don't think, I think the th loot that I'm looking for does come from the raid. Specifically, I'm looking for things like the Nexus Princess weapons, uh, like Void Reaper's Warp Blade. I'm looking for the Queen Anserek ring, which again does drop for Windwalker. Another thing though I would like is the Mad Queen's Mandate, or the Void Reaper's Contract, which only drop for the Windwalker specialization. Now, there are a couple of items from the dungeons that would be cool and convenient, but again, don't really require me to be in Brewmaster spec because Brewmaster is going to drop some like interesting tr tank trinkets that I don't necessarily want or need. For example, um, like the, the, the Swarm Gland here, don't really need that. Um, I, th I believe that in the Stone Vault, I don't really care for the Refracting Aggression module. While it is a really good trinket, uh, this is something that you don't necessarily need at the highest item level. I would treat this somewhat like a cheat death trinket where uh, you don't need it completely maxed out. You do still benefit from the agility, and while having a little bit more agility on a Mythic track would be nice, it's not something that's going to really net you as much damage and is only really good for pushing the cutting edge keys. And as of right now, my primary concern is doing big damn and raid progression. And raid progression strictly comes down to doing big damn. So that's probably why I'm going to be rolling Windwalker for the next few weeks until I start getting very specific with the loot that I'm looking for. Uh, but anyways, let's open this up. I am 621, so the chance of it being a direct upgrade or a significant upgrade is pretty small. Uh, but here we go. We have actually a couple of interesting items here already right off the bat. So uh, we are having access to our crit mastery back piece. This is actually fine. It is high mastery, low crit. Um, the problem with this cloak is that I am wearing a champion cloak right now, the Wings of Shattered Sorrow from Rashanan, the rare cloak. The problem, though, is that this cloak is probably going to be best in slot as long as I'm raiding and I still have access to the heroic loot table in terms of like where my guild's planning to still farm Heroic for a while. And then I'll also eventually hopefully have it on the Mythic track. So there's no reason for me to actually look at any cloak other than uh, the, the the Shattered Sorrows. Now I did proc a ring here, which is actually, this is actually my best in slot ring. And I would actually, it would replace my veteran track ring that I'm still holding here. Uh, the Ring of Dun Elgaz. This comes from Grim Batoll. If you are a Brewmaster player, this is a very strong ring. It's high verse, lower crit, two of our favorite stats. I have Avoidance on mine personally, hence why I added two sockets. I thought I'd be using this for a long time, but we obviously now have access to Seal of Poison Pack, which is high crit, low mastery, and it deals that extra damage at no loss of stats. So very, very powerful ring. Most likely I'm leaning towards this uh, by looking at what else I have here. Uh, the only downside of this is eventually I would hope to get it on Mythic, but the problem is that uh, won't be on Mythic for a while, and uh, rings tend to have a higher value at a lower item level because of double sockets. So I'm going to add double sockets to this, I'm going to get a big ring enchant on it, and then it will never be replaced until I have a, basically a duplicate at the Mythic level. We also have Hero Track Shoulders. Again, I already have Hero Track Shoulders maxed out, and they don't have any tertiary stats, so not a great choice. So from our raid vault slot, um, the ring is definitely very, very good. Now, we do have the Ritual Commander's Ring, which I already have on at 2 of 6 Heroic, 613 item level. But, again, rings have tend to have a higher value. Yes, I could take this. Yes, it's on the Mythic Track. Um... But I believe that the extra damage I would be getting from Seal of the Poison Pack might be a better choice, despite it still being on the hero track. It's not going to cost me any upgrades. It is at 626, which is a higher item level than the 623. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much my kind of thought process here. I did get gloves, Mythic Track gloves. They are probably our worst tier for Brewmaster specifically. We It's the one slot we don't want, only because it's high haste, low crit, compared to the shoulders, which is low haste high mastery because mastery is still a pretty powerful stat especially once you start hitting those diminishing returns on like things like crit and versatility so gloves we tend to stay away from and right now i do actually have crafted gloves at, with crit verse preferred stats 
So most likely I'm going to pass on this. The only reason I would actually take this is for the transmog. So maybe in a couple of weeks, if I ever see these proc again, I'll probably grab them. And then lastly, we have the Shadow Chill Am Amis. Amis? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm, I'm very illiterate. Uh, this very good stats, but again, we would be turning them into tier, which would then be haste mastery, which I don't need because I also have them. Uh, well, I guess this is a mythic track, but I also have them here already. So not really need to grab this. And then last but not least, I have a 584, uh, from doing like, I don't know how I got this, maybe some world quest or something. Uh, definitely not taking this though. It has leech and it has a socket on it already. Of course I proc the good shit on <laughs> the 584 piece and then i have 616 gloves on the hero track again probably not going to take so right now i guess the big choice is basically between ritual commander's ring uh, or seal of the poison pact um, uh, not unfortunately i'm actually really happy with this uh, this is the rare item that i really really wanted the fact that I was able to proc this with such high crits is most likely the fact that I'm just going to take it. Now, one thing I can do, though, is I could check uh, some of the different aggregating data sites to see if a lot of people are running this ring or if it seems to be a popular choice. Now, of course, it is a rare item, so chances of it being ran a lot right now is probably pretty low, but it's still worth checking anyways. So what I like to do is I actually like to go to a little site called... Uh, well, let's start with Archon GG. Ever since Subcreation uh, was kind of acquired by them, there's not really a need for us to look anywhere else. So what that looks like is here, Archon.gg. This is actually part of the Warcraft logs, and I think they acquired Subcreation's um, data string or like how they acquire data, the API. But for Mythic Plus specifically, let's look at Brewmaster. Um, and let's take a look at their gear, actually. So we can go to gear and tier sets. And we can actually we can actually see here that um, people are mostly running the two rings that I currently have on. And if we show more, you'll eventually maybe so oh, you don't even see the rare ring anymore or at all. So let's kind of look through this. I'm wondering why that might be actually. You're even seeing like PvP rings being popular. I'm actually kind of curious why people aren't running it. I, maybe because it doesn't have the versatility on it, because you you do end up getting a lot of versatility from your from your jewelry slots. So I'm also going to check out Wowhead. Wowhead's best uh, BIS lists are actually here. So we have things like we can look at gear, right? And this is this is written by Sinzu, um, who raids for Gur Arfarf Bark or whatever the guild name is, um, but. They are stating here that the best rings from the raid are going to be Seal of Poison Pact and Ritual Commander's Ring. Uh, actually, this is overall Brewmaster Monk best in slot gear, and then it does break down from Raid and Mythic Plus. So you're going to be seeing the Seal of the Poison Pact, and it's also going to recommend the Ringworm, but it's only because these are the only two rings that really drop from the raid. And then in Mythic Plus, they're probably going to be, yeah, so Dun Gaz and Commander's Ring. Those are probably the best. Um, so here's what else is interesting is this is generally another site that I do like to look at Murloc IO. They do somewhat similar of what Archon GG does. And again, it's just another source. I wouldn't ever take this as like, um, a must, but it's definitely something you can, you know, gander at and figure out if it's going to be like worthwhile running. Now this early in the season, you're probably going to get a lot of the same kind of, uh, recommendations for gear you're going to be seeing a lot of that verse gear coming in now the problem with my current ring setup is simply the fact that i have a 606 so i'm a little nervous to still lose around 2500 versatility but i think the trade-off is pretty big and then i can always you know gem and enchant specifically for verse but as you can see here the breakdown of the stats you're going to see basically an even split between versatility and critical strike critical strike you want to aim for that give or take like thirteen thousand, and same with the verse another thirteen thousand here so you're looking at like a 30 percent critical strike versus um about that 17 percent. the thing that i've also been doing lately is i have been flasking for crit which i can always just flask reverse instead so that is an option. I think I'm leaning towards the ring, though. After looking at the different stats, though, I, I really don't know if it's because this is a rare item and when it does drop, maybe it's given to other DPS that, you know, maybe tend to do more nature damage. Now, when I sim this, it's simming about like a 2.5% upgrade, probably because of the stats it's giving, but also because of the, the venom damage that it does do. Now, monks have been leaning a little bit away towards doing nature damage, because we're, we dropped things like Chi Wave, we dropped things like Rushing Jade Wind that no longer do that nature damage for us passively, that it's really going to come down to like things like Chi Burst as well as some other tertiary effects through like Trinkets. So for example, like the Toxic, uh, like the, the Fleetwing Toxic, for example. So I think 
uh, it's actually kind of a hard decision because I am passing on Myth Gear for basically a hero track item. And while it is a higher item level, these can eventually go higher. But at the end of the day, I can always craft rings if I get unlucky in the future. Um, and it's a long season and it's a video game. So I'd rather have the cool rare loot than anything else here. So let's select our Seal of the Poison Pact. Now, we'll, I'll let you guys know in the near future if I end up regretting this decision. Um, we're going to end up seeing how much versatility I'm going to end up losing by replacing this ring. But again, I'm going to be enchanting with versatility. I'm going to be socketing versatility. And I might be able to swing some of my other stats in a different direction. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to be losing about 3,000. <laughs> it's such a big number. I'm going to be losing, give or take, 3,000 versatility for the benefit of another, like, 3,000 crits. And again, a little bit of mastery here and there. But if we look, um, once I equip this item, I do drop about 4% verse, which is quite big. But I can definitely make that up by doing a couple different things here. So first things first... We have these magnificent jeweler settings, which allow you to socket your items. These are definitely a good pickup. They are quite expensive, so I don't recommend doing it unless you know you're never going to replace that item, which in this case, I don't think I will for a very long time now. Again, it might come down to, wow, I really need that additional 1.5% damage reduction from versatility. And once I have a higher ring of uh, Dun Algaz or whatever it's called, I can probably replace it. And then, so I'm going to be picking up two of those. So these are really good. You can add them to rings as well as necklaces something else i can definitely do is i want to get this deadly sapphire now honestly i could always just make these myself but i'm going to be picking up probably two of these to put in each socket this is going to give me a good bit of uh versatility as well as a little bit more crit even though i won't need it because i'm now at 32 percent crit and then i want to actually start thinking about replacing the enchants on my gear that are currently giving me crit so it's basically the two enchants on my ring or the one enchant now at this point uh, I am a little bit of a broke boy, mostly because I've been shuffling around a lot of my gold due to uh, professions on my alts. So I am kind of sitting a little bit lower. I do have about 20k sitting in my war bank at least, so instead of having to log over, I can just do this, which will be a little bit better in the long run. Now, there are some pretty decent enchants I could technically pick up from this vendor or from the, from the auction house, but I think what we're probably just going to do for now, just to save a little bit of gold until I can start doing some farming or buy a wow token is i could just go glimmering verse here now there's also the cursed verse which has a chance to it'll sap your mastery for versatility but this enchant as you can see is going for sixteen thousand. um and while you know what actually screw it we're gonna say fuck it i'm gonna get one of those and then i'm gonna actually go glimmering verse for my other ring and that should at least bump me up a little bit in the versatility department maybe back to that 17 percent, which is exactly what uh, we're getting recommended by uh, Wowhead for, or not Wowhead, um, Murloc IO and these other sites. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our two sockets here. Again, I'm dropping so much money. <laughs> I shouldn't. I should. It's it's crazy how much gold I'm willing to drop on this just to, for the smallest little smallest little gain. So we're uh, we're now back up to that 17%, which is good. We'll apply this, and hopefully that kicks in. And it looks like we're good. And then what we'll do is we'll add this cursed versatility to our ring as well. I doubt it'll bump me up any higher. So like we were seeing, it was like saying around that 13, for like uh, 13,400. I'm just shy of that. And then we can also replace it on my other ring. So we are now pretty jacked out. I could I definitely need to drop some crits. I can either do that through recrafting my, my gloves or... I can pretty much, um, actually, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else I can really replace. Uh, maybe bracers. I think bracers definitely can take a little bit of a change. But yeah, we are now looking really big with this ring. Again, I don't know if it's because it's so rare that a lot of players aren't running it um, in Mythic Plus or if it comes down to the fact that um, it's actually just maybe not good and maybe I definitely wasted my my vault. So we're gonna we're going to find out. So it looks like we can now get heroic crests by spending our normal crest, which is actually really good, which means I can upgrade, you know, any kind of heroic pieces that I still need, which I don't actually think I do. I think everything I need now, no, I guess these require heroic, right? Ruined Harbringer. So what I could do is I can then spend again 90 of my normal crests that I'm never going to use again, and I can actually turn these, I can turn 90 into 15. So if I do this... I can actually then now use these 
I'll be honest, I don't know what unlocks this. I don't know if it's a specific item level requirement. I think it is. I honestly don't know. But now what we can do is I can upgrade my trinkets. So I can upgrade like my flayed toxin, toxin, for example, which actually, if I bump this up, it should allow me to now bump this one up for free. Yes, because I already have a 619 trinket in my bag. So now we're sitting really pretty on that. And I don't think I need heroic for like anything else. Oh, I could do this ring actually. And now I believe I pretty much have 616 or higher in almost, oh, I guess this one I still, oh, we can do this one more time. Let's do that. Now the, the trade-off here is like 90 for 15 is definitely, it's like a 25% trade value or 400%, I guess, uh, whatever, <laughs> what, however the percent ends up being. But um, so now I have gr outgrown these. So now all of my characters can now, um, well, first I can, I can trade them up, but I, all my other characters should now have a crest discount for upgrading their gear because I'm maxed out. I only need mythic crests now going forward, which is good. It's very cool. So when it comes to nature damage, there's a few things that we have going on for us. We have Chi Burst, we have Chi Surge, we also have both of our trinkets that are dealing it. Um, but for the most part, the rest of the things we do is fire damage. Now I could always go Rushing Jade Wind if I felt like it was worthwhile proccing the ring, but I don't think it is. And um, yeah, there's not really much else to talk about. We do not get another charge this week of your of your little uh, catalyst, so don't don't think you do. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait till next week. But if you've been unlucky or you don't raid or whatever it might be, you should definitely be able to get four four set next week. Also, I want to be clear: you do not get another spark this week either, which is something that I just noticed now. You have to. It's normally what they did in past seasons, especially throughout Dragonflight, is that you had a uh, you had a craft one week and a catalyst the next, and it rotated, which was a kind of a nice little cadence. Like you always got some type of upgrade each week of like a gear that you want. But this time around, you're getting like loaded with the two things at the same time. You get a catalyst charge and you get a um, a craft. But you have to now wait a week to kind of just chill. Oh, and then another thing too is there is the new trading post it is october 1st which is kind of convenient that it um you know overlapped with a reset as well there are a lot of cool things here they added like this ebony parasol for example it gives you slow fall actually not a bad thing to have there's some other cool like weapons but the big thing is like the ensemble i think it's very like halloween themed i'll probably be buying some of this stuff later and they they're bringing through some of these like darker kind of colored items for Halloween, which is pretty dope. There aren't a ton of like really cool stuff here. I've always liked these hands. I remember they came out in like Sanctum, Sanctum of Domination. They released some of these or in uh, the Maw. Throwback to a very spooky expansion. But yeah, these parasols are kind of insane, insane tech. So for example, I actually have it bound. It helps you with slow falling. So what it does is it, it is a cast, but when you're falling, it'll randomly slow fall you. Like once you fall enough to take fall damage, and it actually, it's a buff that lasts for um, 15, 15 minutes. So you can grab it and then it's like, oh, shucks, I'm going far. Boop. And I don't take damage. So if you want to pick them up, it's definitely worth. Like if you're, if you're too cheap to buy like goblin gliders or if you ever find yourself needing them for any type of like dungeon mechanic or anything like that, it's, they're pretty useful. All right, though, I'm feeling pretty good about that uh, vault, but let's log over and check our alts. It's really weird. The season has been pretty slow in terms of like, well, the first week of Mythic Plus, it was like, go, 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 got to get score, got to get score. And then when the second week hit, it was like, wait a second, because all the weeks are now homogenized and there isn't a difference between Tyrannical and Fortified, it was a little bit more tame week two, where I didn't feel like I needed to constantly be doing keys all the time, especially on my main. So this is now kind of the point where I want to start working on alts. Yeah, it's just a good time to work on alts. Uh, but the thing that I'm definitely going to be working on a little bit more than like my, my warrior, my paladin, which I prefer playing, is my demon hunter because my guild will eventually hit Brood Twister. And for Brood Twister, despite the nerfs coming in this week, we're definitely at a point where you still need grips. And I don't really want to play Death Knight, so we're not going to be playing Death Knight at all. Okay, so I'm going to just open this as prots. I only ended up doing, I think, like a couple of delves on this character, not even enough to fill everything. So I'm pretty much just going to instant take whatever is here, which is a ring. I'm fine with that. Like a crit haste ring is is fine for like prot warrior DPS. So I'm chilling with this. It doesn't have a sock or anything, but it does replace one of my 590 bands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just slam this in 
on one of my fingers and we're gonna just log on over. So I've really been enjoying the Paladin despite it not performing super well so far this tier. I think it plays very, I don't know, it's like a very enjoyable thing to play currently, but it does just underperform a little bit and also community perceptions real down bad, despite them actually, I think, being a little bit better than Brewmaster Monk. I think all tanks are actually fairly balanced right now, which is, Prop Paladin's one of those things where it like, you need a little bit of attention from your healer, you have to kind of pull things differently and your cadence, like the, your route cadence has to be just like a little bit better or a little bit more structured. Now, Prop Paladin is getting a rework in the 11.0.5 patch coming up in a few weeks here. So it's looking a little bit better now. They are more or less band-aid fixes, but there are some quality of life talents being added and also being removed, which is kind of nice. And, uh, but anyways, we're gonna just open this in Prot. I didn't really do much on this character again. I just did really delve. So I'm gonna be pretty much grabbing whatever I can. So it looks like I have <laughs> veteran tier shoulders from a heroic dungeon that I did and I got an, a big 616 shield. Now I was actually gonna end up crafting a shield, but I think for the time being, this actually won't be a horrible choice that I can grab. Uh, plus it's a pretty cool transmog, so I think I'm actually just gonna end up doing that. This gives a fair uh, bit of armor strength as well as stamina, so I think the shield's gonna kind of take precedence over the tier shoulders. Now I still have access to the KSM token, which I'll eventually get. Uh, and then I also have two catalyst charges still, and I'll get one next week. So I'm in not really a rush to get any any specific item or like any or like my tier set, I guess I should say. Um, and I'm only five. Uh, I'm only five ninety eight. I haven't really been doing much, but I do eventually plan on getting this tank up and running. Obviously, we just do we do need to fix the transmog a little bit here, which I actually ended up changing the shield to this. I need to save, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, last but not least, we do have the Demon Hunter. Now, I, I definitely put way more work into my Demon Hunter this last week. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I pretty much, I filled out my raid uh, with a normal, normal clear. I also did a couple of dungeons and some delves. So I have more than just one vault slot or two vault slots like you saw on my other two alts. Uh, the thing is, Brood Twister, you know, my guild, we're two of eight right now, but we think that Sikran and Rashanan will go down probably this week. And then we'll be on Brood Twister. And Brood Twister is, if for anyone who watched the Race to World first, knows that it's going to be, it's a crazy boss. It hardwalled a lot of people. It received a minor nerf and then a major nerf. Actually, the nerf came in today, um, which nerfs like a lot of different components about the fight. But from my understanding, they'd never really changed anything about the, the ad spawning or the positioning, which is kind of unfortunate because the nerfs didn't really address the issue with the fight, which is mostly composition. You need plenty of knockbacks and mass grips to group up the mobs at the frequency that they spawn. Uh, so Death Knight is obviously great for this with Mass Grip, but Sigil of Change also works somewhat as well, but you would obviously prefer the Death Knight because I think the DH does require a little bit more uh, healing compared to the Death Knight, but I know that we're gonna be probably pretty more geared when we go in there. So with that being said, that's why I'm gearing up my VDH. It's not really for Mythic Plus or anything. I mean, I'm gonna probably play to Mythic Plus. I enjoy it in Mythic Plus, but um, we're gonna actually be opening this as Havoc though. And the reason why is for the same reason I open it up as Windwalker on my on my Brewmaster Monk is that there isn't really any tank items that I really need from the raid or from the one couple of keys that I did. So we're going to just open this up as Havoc. Now in future weeks I might open it up as Vengeance, but for now we're going to see what we can get. All right. So a few good things here. Um, of, of course, I am getting just champion gear. So this is probably not something I'd like, though this tier chest would be an upgrade and it completes my four set. Um, and while four set isn't as impactful for vengeance as like the Brewmaster Monk, for example, it's still pretty good. The Mercurial Egg is not super great trinket only because of the movement that DHs typically do. And then the Treasure Transmitter, while it is a lot of haste um, and agility, it's like on this awkward minute and a half cooldown, which isn't necessarily super great. Um, especially on the champion track. Now I did get a hero trance, uh, hero track legs, which would be an upgrade over my current pants, but they are uh, non, non tier. And I don't think I actually have any catalyst charges. I think I ended up sending them on just my champion pieces. Cause I was like, you know what? I just need tier set. I can always upgrade these to 619 and then eventually I'll get the hero track stuff. Um, and then I have, again, I have a chest here, which would be an even bigger upgrade as well as a helm with crit mastery speed. Now for DHs specifically, the one tier item that we don't really want would be helmets. Um, I think we prefer everything else, if I'm not mistaken. You kind of want haste, crit, and then verse with mastery being last for the VDH. Um, and I think the helmet is actually like crit mastery, so it's not the best. So 
this is kind of an interesting choice because I can either opt to choose a chest that I know I'll replace but get four set, or I can choose a chest that I'll probably use for a little bit longer. It has a little bit longer shelf life, but I have to wait a week to actually be able to utilize it. Both of these trinkets are out. I don't think I take these pants. Um, so it's basically either a normal chest or a hero chest. Now, this is going to be kind of crazy, but this is an alt. I'm not too focused on... Like, I'm not trying to, like, fast track or fully optimize everything because ultimately I'm probably going to be tanking heroic this week for my guild if I get a couple more item level when we do our clear, I'm assuming. So chances are I'll probably replace any item I take from here, from heroic, because I know a lot of, not a lot of players need the heroic gear, so I more or less might be funneled because we know that we're getting my character ready for Brood Twister. So actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my four set. I think that's going to be a little bit stronger having that. We'll be able to upgrade a lot of this gear using our crests and our Valor Stones. And then uh, it kind of doubles because I'll have access to the, uh, the, the normal appearance, which is nice for just transmog benefit. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Is it the best decision? Probably not. But the difference between like this heroic piece is like I'm going to have to wait to catalyze it anyway, so I won't have four set. And uh, yeah, I just think I, I think I just go for chest. I think I go for normal chest here. All right, and that's it. That is my uh, <laughs> that is my long, long-winded vault opening video. So, I hope maybe this gave you a little bit of insight on why I made my choices, as well as maybe helping you with your choices. If not, just hearing me talk is fun, you know. Anyways, I'll be streaming a little bit this week. I'll be streaming both uh, my my raid progression as well as a bunch of mythic keys, playing all my different tanks. I plan on starting to get really into my alts this week. So, yeah, check out those links down below. Good luck in your vaults, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.